And uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in, in person. Uh, I certainly would like to have been, but uh, not possible at, at this time. Yeah. But let me try to share my screen. Do you see my presentation? Is my presentation visible? Yes, uh, very clear. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, I will be uh, talking about the exchange of S100 data and the role of, of MCP in my presentation here. So, um, of course, the, uh, the digitalization effort that we have been uh, working on for, for many years and also e-navigation, which I believe is pretty much the same thing, is about handling visualization and exchange of digital information, pretty much like the uh, the old uh, e-navigation uh, definition that Mahesh showed in the beginning uh, stated stated. So this is not this is what we need to do, but I think the uh, the the global community has been very much focused on data harmonization. Uh, up to this point. And of course, that is good. We need data harmonization. That is, uh, that is uh, absolutely necessary. And of course, uh, what is happening there is the, uh, the S100 uh, scheme that is being used to create product specification. And we also heard about the uh, IMO compendium, which is another uh, source of, of harmonized uh, data elements. But what we also need is to be able to exchange these data and, uh, and, and, and exchange is something that we, we also need to uh, harmonize, and we need to do that in a smart way, using contemporary methods and contemporary uh, technology, because that is, there's a lot of ways we can exchange data that are not so clever. And uh, one key word here is, is services, because that's the way uh, data is being exchanged in, uh, in, in the IT world. Uh, everybody has heard about service-oriented architecture. But services is also a very, very broad term that is being used for many things. Uh, so in this context of being able to exchange digital information, we are calling it technical services to try to, to uh, narrow it a little bit down what we're talking about. So we need these technical services uh, to allow the, uh, the data exchange. And we need to, to do that uh, in a generic way so we can exchange data between A and B in a secure and reliable way. And uh, A and B can, of course, be many things. It can be two uh, short sites, uh, 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 organizations, and uh, it, it can be anything. What we need to include in who A and B is, is a Shaw authority, like for instance, a VTS center, and a system on board a ship, for instance, an ECDIS. So there will be many different A's and B's, but this particular uh, case where we have a Shaw authority and an ECDIS is important that we are also able to do that because this is a, this is a very regulated area uh, and 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 the uh, it is uh, it requires more to do that that for instance bring some uh, information to a backbridge system of a, of, a, of a vessel so we need to be aware of that the good thing is that uh, that over the the course of of, uh, of uh, yeah many years and and all the uh, the e navigation uh, effort that has been uh, under uh, undertaken we have uh, we have arrived with a lot of, of guidelines, building blocks uh, on how to do this, on how to make these uh, technical services. On the very highest level, we have the uh, the maritime services that we know very well that have been uh, been described over a number of years uh, in, uh, in in IMO and the domain coordinating bodies for maritime services. And these maritime services are on a very high level, and they do not facilitate exchange of digital data. But the maritime services in the IMO uh, description of, of, of these, they do refer to a number of associated technical services, which are the ones that facilitates this digital data exchange. And the technical services themselves 
There's also a guideline that we can use on how to uh, make specifications for the technical services. Ayala has made a guideline called D1128 that describes how we can make these uh, technical services. That complies with the template for technical services that exists in IMO documents. And of course, we've heard about the, uh, the product specifications uh, that will conclude or will include uh, the data model that is needed for the technical services and the portrayal uh, of how these are going to be visualized on different systems, for instance, and, and ICTIS. So these are very high level important building blocks that we have and have had for some, some time. Now these uh, elements here, maritime services, technical services and product specifications, they, the relationship between these are described in an IMO resolution, MSC 467101. Uh, and and uh, there's a nice drawing there where we can see the uh, the uh, this relationship. We have the maritime services on the highest level. Each maritime service references one or more technical services, and one maritime service can can reference technical services from different domains. It's not a one maritime service has its own set of technical services, it can be selected from, from the whole set of, of technical services. And the technical services themselves, they describe the exchange of data, but the data itself is described in a data model, which typically will be taken from different product specifications. And again, there's not need that need not to be a one-to-one -one relationship between a technical service and a product specification. A technical service may create a data model that takes elements from different product specifications. All the technical service could be uh, using data models created uh, from elements in the IMO compendium. That would also be perfectly possible. There are more building blocks. When we, uh, when we do this exchange of data, we need to be able to uh, give uh, identifiers to different things that we are, we are exchanging. So uh, there's uh, uh, a mechanism being made for, for that, which has also been mentioned before, the maritime resource names. Uh, and there's a, a guideline for that, and that has been uh, adopted by Ayala and, and IHO. And uh, I think it's also beginning to uh, pop up in, uh, in IMO documents. So there's a, there's a guideline for how to make unique identifiers. The, the, uh, the guideline I mentioned before for technical services is still very generic. It is for technical services, but it does not prescribe any specific technology. So uh, since we are using internet technology in a, in a greater and greater extent, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, beneficial to have a guideline that explains how to make a technical service that uses internet technology. For that purpose, we have IALA guideline D1157 that explains how to create a technical service using internet technology and internet technology uh, services there. They're called web services. So this guideline is uh, about web services uh, to, to, uh, to facilitate S100 data exchange. And uh, the, the last uh, guideline here is a guideline to define how data is being exchanged between shore and ship. And this is an IEC guideline uh, or standard that is called CECOM. And uh, this is very important uh, guideline because uh, this, this, this standard, it's not called a guideline in the IEC, it's uh, called a standard. This standard explains how data can be exchanged from shore to directly to the ICTIS. So, uh, so uh, you can have different technical services that can uh, that can be uh, transmitted to different uh, systems. But of course, the ICTIS being a very regulated uh, device, uh, this this takes something extra. So the the IC standard CECOM is defined to enable this digital data exchange from shore to the ICTIS. And also, there's a process within IMO. Because in order to enable this, the, uh, the performance standard of the ECDIS needs to be revised and open up for this possibility. So that is a process that is underway now in, in IMO that hopefully will open up 
for the CECOM standard to be used to deliver data to the to the ECDIS. And these technical services, there's a little important note at the at the bottom corner here. These technical services are, of course, something that is uh, exchanging data between machine to machine, and then many times uh, it will be visualized for a, a human, a navigator, or some other uh, stakeholder. But th these are, since they are machine to machine, also able to uh, support mass. In fact, mass cannot be done on a global scale without such technical services. An autonomous vessel needs to get data in a harmonized way, harmonized data through harmonized channels with the harmonized data exchange in order for it to make the uh, decisions that it has to make to go about its business on uh, on the uh, on the uh, global uh, seaways. So this this is also important to support mass these types of services. So building technical services using these uh, different guidelines makes it possible to exchange uh, the data. But there's actually something more needed because I also mentioned at the beginning, this needs to be uh, secure and, and, and reliable. And there's another guideline that uh, IL have made, G1161, which is about platforms to support these technical services because we need, for instance, the ability to authenticate service providers and in some case service consumers we need to be sure a navigational warning is actually coming from the authorities in that some specific country which is authorized to deliver that type of information <coughs> sorry and also we are going to use internet technology more and more and internet in uh, on the internet as we all know there is everything imaginable and then some and it's a jungle and we need to be able to find the technical services that is needed by whoever stakeholders is, 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 is needing services. So we need a way of reliably uh, support service discoverability, which is what the MCP is, uh, is created for. And uh, <clears throat> given the, uh, the, the 10 minute presentation time here, I'm not going to dive into the MCP. But one thing I will point out is that the MCP, when we talk about the MCP, it is not a single system. The MCP is a fully decentralized system that has these abilities to provide authentication and service discoverability, and also a messaging service that uh, that Stefan was, uh, was uh, mentioning. It's a fully decentralized uh, system, so we can have many different MCP service providers. That is a very important thing. Otherwise, it would not be possible to make this a, a global system. So these technical services uh, should be developed uh, according to these different uh, uh, guidelines and, and standards. And uh, are they being developed? Are any technical services being developed uh, in, in uh, following these standards? And uh, yes, they are. There is uh, a task group in Ayala that is developing uh, technical uh, standards for uh, providing ATON information using the uh, the product specifications that uh, uh, Sewang was mentioning in the presentation before. Uh, so that will be probably one or two technical services providing different types of, of aids uh, to navigation information. And also uh, recently, uh, the VTS committee started a task group in Ayala to create technical services following all these guidelines and standards for providing VTS information. Still very much in the early days, but uh, that ta uh, task at least has uh, formally been, been started now. And in IHO, there's uh, work being done to create a technical service for the provision of navigational warnings. And there is already some uh, uh, technical service that has been existing from uh, for some time. I think Anas from Neverlink will be mentioning that, as, uh, which is being used on the Neverlink platform. So that is something that is also uh, uh, being being uh, it, that is actually already uh, operational. Um, and regarding MCP, I would just like to come with a short uh, commercial here for an uh, and a seminar that is being held. Uh, actually, that would be next next Saturday in the Ayala headquarters. And if you can all keep a secret, it is 
possible, although this has been uh, promoted as a physical uh, seminar, which it will be, but it will also be possible to uh, join online to uh, follow this seminar. You just need to register in the on the Ayala webpage and uh, and we will uh, set up uh, the means to follow this uh, online. So that was uh, that was uh, all from me. Uh, thank you very much.